ABM industry groups, 1B9 HES facilities, and 1B10 Illuminate Education. Can you repeat those names just once more? Sure. ABM Industry Groups, LLC, two contracts, um, HES Facilities, LLC, and Illuminate Education, two contracts as well. All right. We have one, nine, and ten from the consent agenda being pulled. Do I have any other amendments, or can I uh, accept an, an, a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Move we'll accept the agenda with the said exception. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right, our agenda has been adopted with three amendments. We will move on to awards and recognitions from our statewide director of schools, Dr. Adrian Battle. Thank you so much, um, Chair Bugs. Um, before we jump into our awards and celebrations, um, I just want to acknowledge um, what has occurred um, today down in Texas. We are definitely devastated by the senseless, horrific shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, that has caused the death of several students and teachers. Children have the right to learn and thrive in a safe environment, free from violence or tragedy. And far too often, society fails in protecting that right. Our hearts go out to all the families in Uvalde who have lost loved ones. We will be working with our student support services team to offer our teachers and staff tools necessary to help themselves and their students process this tragic event. And we'll be consulting with the Metro National Police Department and MPS Security to determine any additional steps that should be taken in the immediate aftermath. So again, our hearts um, and our prayers go out to that community. Tonight, we are celebrating two schools that earned a very impressive honor earlier this month. Every year, the Tennessee Department of Education and the Tennessee STEM Innovation Network recognize a small, a small number of schools across the state with the Tennessee STEM or Tennessee STEAM school designation. And just to make sure everyone who's listening is speaking the same language here, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, while the A in STEAM adds arts to the mix. Only 27 Tennessee schools across the state received this honor for the 2021-22 school year, and two of them are ours. Carter Lawrence Elementary School, which was designated a STEAM school, and Isaac Lytton Middle School, which was designated a STEM school. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to um, ask Executive Principal Sherlita Sanders from Carter Lawrence and Dr. Char Rand from Isaac Lytton to come on up to the podium, please. So to earn these designations, both Carter Lawrence and Isaac Linton underwent a rigorous application process that included self-evaluations, interviews, and hosting site visits with the Tennessee STEM and STEAM designation review team. The process requires schools to submit a plan of action for the implementation and sustainability of their STEM or STEM, STEAM educational programs for the next five years. In addition, the designation rubric included five areas of focus, infrastructure, curriculum and instruction, professional development, achievement, and community and post-secondary opportunities. In other words, this wasn't easy. These designations show how hard Carter Lawrence and Isaac Lydon have worked to transform the way they teach these subjects and reach their students, which is what it's all about. And if I can add just a little flavor in here, because I have the pleasure of visiting schools all the time. We've had conversations. They had this as a goal. They knew exactly what they wanted to achieve with their students, and I'm so proud that you both were able to accomplish what you set out to do with you, your staff, your students, and your families. Dr. Sanders, Dr. Rand, their teams have done amazing work, and we're so proud of them and so honored to have you honored in this way. If everyone can join me and give them a round of applause for their great work. You have to come up for a photo um, so we can um, get some, some pictures of you and celebrate further with you as we move through today and for the weeks and months to come. So come on up and join us for a picture.
shoot the damn elk. <laughs> I love Turley. It's a shame when you're fighting over principles. Every few days, I have to let somebody know the District 5 principles aren't going anywhere. Don't, don't ask them. <laughs> well, congratulations again. All right, we will now move on to our consent agenda. We have pulled numbers one, I'm sorry, B, one, nine, and 10. Can I have a motion to accept the consent agenda as it was once amended? Do I have a second? All right, all in favor, raise your hand. We do this as a formality. All right. <clears throat> all in favor, uh, it looks like it's unanimous. Yeah. But do we have okay. to do a roll call because of? Uh, we, uh, my apologies, we have to do a roll call vote because we have two virtual. Dr. Severe. Dr. Gentry. Yes. Dr. Gentry votes aye. Ms. Elrod. Aye. Ms. Elrod votes aye. Ms. Masters. Aye. Ms. Masters votes aye. Mr. Little. Mr. Little votes aye. Ms. Bush? Aye. Ms. Bush votes aye. Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Poopa Walker? Aye. Ms. Uh, Ms. Poopa Walker votes aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Chair Bugs? Aye. Chair Bugs votes aye. Madam Chair, you have nine ayes. All right. Now we will move on to uh, item B1, ABM Industry Groups, LLC, with two contracts. Mrs. Tyler. Yes, so um, this is for a renewal, well actually it's an extension for an existing contract we have with this um, group. They perform janitorial services in our schools in one of the sections of them. And um, I just, I have had concerns about the way I have seen the custodial work in our schools throughout the pandemic. And I'm also concerned with how much they pay their employees. So one of the things I wanted to do was um, I asked you guys to pull some information for me and um, I'm, I'm thankful that you guys were able to do so. And I'm just, I just have real concerns and I think that we need to say if we're talking about making sure that we're taking care of our own employees and that we are paying them a living wage, we have our minimum wage of $15 in MMPS, that is important to us, that we celebrated that. Um, I have real concerns that we're contracting with a group that pays their employees less than a living wage. And on top of that, do not provide enough materials because there are frequently schools without soap, without paper towels, without the things that they need to make sure that the students and the areas are clean. Um, and that many schools are often down one or two from their staff. Um, one of my high schools, one of our large comprehensive high schools only has three janitors for the entire school. And um, that is not something that MMPS has control over because we've contracted with this outside group. It's under the control of this outside group. And so I just have real concerns about their ability to fulfill their contract appropriately because they have not been doing it. All right, uh, any other questions or thoughts around this? Mrs. Masters? Yeah, I just want to say, I also am very appreciative of I asked to see the contracts and to see some information on the on the company. Um, I also, I just sort of asked, you know, how does this compare to the, our support staff? We've been, talk, been talking a lot about compensation for support staff, specifically in MMPS, and all those, these are contracted employees. I would like to see us contracting with companies that are compensating their employees at that same level, and I did not see that. I think between, it was 12 and 13 an hour, 13 an hour being the average wage, um, that is not an appropriate level of compensation in my mind. And I, I feel that I am at a bit of a disadvantage this evening because I am leaving soon to go to a graduation. Um, and so I would like to move that we defer this contract to discussion at our next full board meeting. Um, and in that amount of time, perhaps we can continue having some conversations with our MMPS staff and see if we can get this contract maybe to something a little more appropriate compensation wise. Or just so I'm clear, so are you asking that MMPS staff renegotiate a contract or are you suggesting that you would find other potential contracts that have compensation in line with what you're looking for? I think for right now, I am simply making a motion that we defer discussion of this contract until our next board meeting. 
Okay, but no, but no ask of the staff for now. That's um, what I'm it, at. I don't know if that would be appropriate within the context of what I'm asking for this motion. Okay. But you know, point of order. Yeah, it's two it's separate things. things. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Now, if this is a motion, yes, I think I, I've been thinking often about this board and maybe be misunderstandings or making sure that we understand what each other are asking for or what we're doing in between the times that we meet. And so I just want to make sure that making sure that either you have tasked staff with doing something or you have not. And this is just a conversation for the board to have in two weeks. Yeah. And I think, you know, my reasoning behind the, de the requesting the deferral is, um, you know, perhaps some things could come to light <laughs> during the board discussion today. But and I do not feel comfortable going to celebrate Maplewood High School <laughs> right now until I've at least made an attempt at deferring this contract because I feel strongly that I want to be a part of that conversation. And we can certainly have the motion and then come back to discuss yeah. details about what, what the ask is. Yeah. All right, so we can take these separately. Mm -hmm. We'll start with 1B. Is there a motion on the floor before we discuss 9 or 10? So uh, 1B1? Still, I, I wanted to say something, sure. too. I mean, I, yeah, I put it So you could do, it'd be 1 and 10 are both different janitorial services. Right. But both of them are, have, I have similar concerns about both. Okay, so would you like to make a motion around 1 or but 10? I think oh, I have a motion discussion right now. Yeah, we can continue discussion. Okay. Yeah. So before um, the it, motion it's discussion, Emily, it's, right? Uh, Ms. We can Master's have motion, motion and discussion. Wait, either one is really frank. I was yeah. just... Okay, I know she has to go, so. Yeah, I just, I just wanted so to That's what I'm saying, sure. we can have motion, and then you can discuss yes. still, and then we can vote, so she can leave if she needs to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, do you, are you comfortable with that? Because you're going to have to leave after the. Yeah, okay. I mean. So, do you want to make I a make motion a, for both of them? I move deferral of Thank items uh, 1B1 and 1B10 until the next oh, wait, no, board. No, 1B9. No, I'm 1B9. sorry. That was my Thank fault. Thank you. Okay. I move deferral of items 1B1 and 1B9 Nine. I think that's, to the next mm -hmm. board meeting. Yeah, that's what second. I was trying to do. Thank you, Sharon. I second. All right. <laughs> now, did you have any further before I move on to Ms. Bush? Don't want to cut you off. Me? Yes. Um, no, I just want to have the opportunity to have the conversation at a later date when other some of us aren't having to leave to go. Yeah. Certainly. All right, Mrs. Bush. Um, so I, I share the same concerns about both of these contracts. Um, of course, I've had concerns, uh, information received from my schools that the um, janitorial services is less than, than what they're expecting. So um, I wasn't in agreement that we got rid of the contract or we got rid of our own employees and decided to go with the contract at the time when uh, Dr. Register was um, in place as the superintendent. So I, I too share the same sentiments and I think we need to definitely have a robust discussion about moving forward with, with a contract this large, um, especially when they're not providing the services that we are expecting. Are we going to make a motion? Are we going to pass it? If we voted, are we voting for it now before you go? If we voted, it will be on the deferment. Mm -hmm. There's a motion on the floor. Ready for the mm -hmm. vote. All right. All in favor, please raise your hand. Roll call vote. Necessary, yep. please. <laughs> Dr. Gentry? Aye. Dr. Gentry votes aye. Ms. Elrod? Aye. Ms. Elrod votes aye. Ms. Masters? Aye. Ms. Masters votes aye. Mr. Little? His mic's off. Come back mic's to off. I'll return to Mr. Little. Uh, Ms. Bush? Aye. Oh, there's Mr. Mr. Little? Aye. Voted aye. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Little votes aye. Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Poopa Walker? Aye. Ms. Tyler, Ms. Poopa Walker votes aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Chair Bugs? Aye. Chair Bugs votes aye. Madam Chair, you have nine ayes. Thank you. All right, so a deferral for one and nine passes. We will now move on to 10, Illuminate Education, Inc., with two contracts. This yes. is Tyler. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm pulling up what I was going to say about this. So this is um, the Illuminate contract is the group that does the fast bridge testing that we use. And by state law, we are required to do... Um, I'm sorry, we are required to have screeners every year and we're required to report those to the state. Um, so I'm so sorry, I'm trying to pull up exactly what I wanted to say about it. Okay, here we go. Um, so 
according to that new state law, we have to use a screener and the results must be reported to the state. The state has a list of approved vendors that we're allowed to use for that screener. Um, FastBridge is one of them. MAP is one of them that we use as well. And these contracts are for FastBridge, the, um, which is owned by Illuminate. And I just wanted to ask first, um, if we're, are we not using MAP moving forward? And if not, can you explain why? Because I didn't see a contract for MAP on here. Dr. Melody, if you can approach the podium, please. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Tyler. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Chengus and Dr. Williams to step up here behind me, too, because a lot of the questions I've seen fall in um, a variety of different worlds. The short answer to your first question is under this, uh, this contract and our assessment platform, we would be moving away from NWEA, um, who uh, administers the MAP assessment, mm -hmm. and we would be replacing it with a combination of assessments from Illuminate, um, FastBridge, and, and benchmark assessments. But I'm going to ask Dr. Chengus and Dr. Williams um, here to, to support as we go through some, a few yeah. more questions. So Dr. Chengus, anything? Definitely. And while he's coming up, I just want to say this is not, I, I'm not making a value judgment on stopping one or the other. I just, I'm trying to see where are we going and, and how are we moving forward? You know, yes. fewer tests can be very helpful. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the <laughs> questions. Um, as you mentioned, uh, the state law, part of the Reading 360 legislation, mm -hmm. requires us to screen our students um, three times a year. <clears throat> um, and we do that in K-3, This is part of the law, and report that data to the state. Um, February 18th was a deadline to submit our winter screening uh, data to the state. And because we have actually been partially using FastBridge and partially using MAP, we actually had to submit both. Um, so all along, we've known that our assessment system is not coherent and not ideal, um, wherein we would like to just be able to administer one screening assessment and that be it. Um, and again, that's the data that would be reported to the state. Um, it's also important to note that the, the state requirement for K-3 is what they provide, but we also have to screen students in other grades for both reading and math. Um, and as Dr. Bellamy mentioned, MAP will, will, we will not be using MAP next year. Uh, when we started out with the RFP back in the fall, actually in August, uh, we knew that the both FAST and MAP contracts were expiring. So we saw it as an opportunity to improve our assessment system, the one we just discussed about being more coherent and seamless with how we administer and how we access reports, um, and to get the best of both worlds is what we've, what we've tried to do. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll just add that uh, we have used a variety of benchmark assessments over the years, uh, Think Link Assessment, uh, Discovery Education, and NWA MAP, and I think they've all helped move us forward in terms of common metrics, common language. We feel this is uh, continuing our evolution to have an integrated system that will deal with both the universal screening and the benchmarks. Uh, will give us adaptive measures that have normative data. Uh, there, there's adaptive measures in, in FAST and under Illuminate that we had not been using before because we were using MAP. Uh, and we'll have the benefit of those. They're highly correlated with, with MAP scores. But we'll also have benchmarks that are fully aligned with grade level standards and will help support tier one instruction. Okay, that's great. And then um, I noticed that we didn't use um, MAP for the third section that we normally do. And so um, I just would love to hear back about, um, I know that we're kind of finishing out our contract with them, but if we're really getting the best value for what we paid for the MAP, why didn't we use it this, this spring? So the, the, the cost is per student over the course of the year, regardless of the number of times we administer. There have been years we've administered four times, mm -hmm. uh, years that we've administered two or three. Uh, but uh, with, with the movement away from MAP and the fact that we have adaptive assessments under FAST, uh, we were able to utilize those assessments as part of our universal screening this spring. Uh, for the first time to have students taking uh, all of the adaptive measures under FAST, which gives us, again, better measures that are better aligned to what the state recommends for screening purposes. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, thank you. And then um, my last question, my last part of this is that um, uh, Ames Web is a different screener that's also on the state approved contract list um, and it's also actually paid for by the state for the different districts to use. Um, 
And so uh, another thing that, that kind of comes to mind about that is that when you use that particular version, as soon as the students finish their testing um, and it's scored, it gets sent directly to the state. So there's not an extra paperwork leg for us to have to do because the state gets that automatically because they're the ones that are paid for it, I would imagine. Um, so I just was wondering why are we signing a new contract for $3.75 million and $1.25 million with Illuminate for FastBridge when we could be using Ames Web for free? Um, and it's my understanding that they're not actually very different as screeners go. Um, so I would just love to hear some thoughts about that. Yeah, thank you again for the question. And to uh, clarify, the free uh, screening tool provided by the state is only K-3. So mm -hmm. we would still need a solution for grades 4 through 12 for screening and progress monitoring. Um, the other thing that I would mention is Dr. Ching has said that we will have a benchmark system that mm -hmm. in a, essentially we replace MAP. And so part of those contracts include the benchmark system that will replace MAP uh, for our benchmark interim benchmarking pur purposes. So the Illuminate is the company, but they, they have their fast bridge for their screening. They also have DNA, which is their benchmark assessment system. And so those contracts actually are for both pieces of those for grades K through 12. Um, um, and I forget the rest of your question. Um, uh, just asking in terms of the you know that they they seem to be the same but it you were saying that it only goes they're only paying for it for K through 3 but we use all the way through 12th grade right right and we, we have to uh, in terms mm -hmm. of ensuring that we're in compliance with the RTI manual mm -hmm. um, so so it's, it was important to think about that just from a uh, coherent standpoint logging into the uh, state's Ames Web platform is different than logging into a Metro Ames Web platform, if that makes sense, because the way they're rostered and the yeah. passwords mm -hmm. and so forth. And also just because in, in terms of that extra step for paperwork, FastBridge as a vendor actually does the data uh, uploading to the state. That's not something we're involved in. We, mm -hmm. we actually uh, approve of them doing that on our behalf. Okay, so we don't have... We that's don't spend an, extra time or correct. anything working. Okay, correct. that's good to and, know. And because it's coherent, uh, instead of doing two parts now, it's all seamless. Go ahead, Dr. Shank. Okay. And I, ju I just want to add, as part of that Illuminate contract, uh, beyond what we asked for, there's also an item bank available to teachers for their own assessments, as well as some pre-built assessments aligned to our standards. Oh, and, I, you know, I've talked to lots of teachers, and, and they have been impressed with FastBridge. They've they have said that it has given them valuable information that they have been able to use immediately for helping their students moving forward. So I'm not questioning um, FastBridge at all. I think it is a valuable tool to help much more so than the state test, much, much more so than the state testing ever could be. Um, it definitely has dividends on how we are able to use instruction immediately after re receiving results. Um, I think... I think you've at answered all of my questions. Does it, anybody else? I can cede the floor to anybody else. Is that all right? I'll just move to approve. Second. All right. It's been moved and properly seconded. Dr. Severe, will you uh, offer a roll call vote? Dr. Gentry? Aye. Dr. Gentry votes Simon Ms. Selrod? Aye. Ms. Selrod votes Simon Ms. Masters? She left. Uh, uh, pardon she had to go to pardon graduation. me. Thank you. Mr. Little? Mr. Little votes aye. Ms. Bush? Aye. Ms. Bush votes aye. Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Poopa Walker? Aye. Ms. Poopa Walker votes aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Chair Bugs? Aye. Chair Bugs votes aye. Madam <coughs> Chair, eight ayes. All right. So we will move on. Oh, that's approved. We will move on then to announcements. All right. We will start with our recent graduate. Angelique. Okay, so I hope everyone is having a great finals week at the end of the school year so close and overall I hope everyone has had a great school year. Um, congratulations to all my fellow seniors who have graduated or will graduate later this week. Though this is the end of our high school chapter, this is only the beginning of our overall journey. So I can't wait to see how far all of you will go and remember your roots in MNPS. Lastly, I just wanted to thank the members of the sport and team for continuously supporting me as well as every MNPS student. And I couldn't have imagined my year, my senior year, without being on this board and for such a great opportunity. Thank you. Mrs. Tyler. 
Um, well, I've already let Angelina know how I feel, but we will miss you very much. You will have very, very large shoes to fill. So thank you for your time on this board and for being brave and strong and willing to stand up and say what you know is representative of the students, which is exactly why you're here. So thank you for that. And um, I also wanted to express my deepest condolences for what's happened in Texas. Um, I don't think I can say much more. Certainly. Certainly. Mrs. Masters has gone on to uh, celebrate our, Ma our Maplewood High School students, or graduates, as long as well as Dr. Battle. We'll move on to Mrs. Elrod. Thank you. Um, I had the honor of being with the John Overton graduates um, this weekend and just wanted to take a moment to brag on them receiving, um, as a class of 2022, more than $15.3 million offered in scholarship money. That includes five of the Belmont Bell Tower Scholars, one USDA 1890 National Scholar, and um, many other different um, wins for them, including uh, TPAC's Male Actor of the Year and many other different, uh, and the Nashville Poet Laureate is also from the Overton 2022 class. So it's a really great class of students, and it was a really wonderful experience, always really well done, and um, just so impressive. I want to remind everybody, of course, it's the last uh, week of school. Great things are happening at MMPS every day, um, and that doesn't end when school is out. And so as we prepare for the next school year, whether that's through our safety measures or ongoing student performance, um, we want to make sure that you know that, of course, every, we have the uh, priority of every student being known, but that the good things are happening every day, and our student board members are a great example of that, and we look forward to our new member joining us soon. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Mrs. Bush. Um, yes. Um, you know, today events of these children and this one teacher that we no longer have on this earth has been very, very sad, and my heart is just broken. Another reason why my heart is broken is because back in 2012 when Sandy Hook happened, um, I never forget my youngest son Dalton, who is uh, who was six years old, just like those those babies that got killed in Sandy Hook. And I never forget calling MMPS, and I asked the question because I understood that elementary schools are not secured. They don't have SROs. They don't have security officers, and it makes it very easy access for our kids to be put, I just, I can't even imagine not holding my child anymore, but I just remember calling MMPS and I said, um, are we ever going to do anything about putting security in our elementary schools? And I never forget the answer was, it's not in our budget. And it just, I couldn't believe it that, you know, just like we do as politicians, as political figures, we are not doing more to protect our children's safety. And we, we can do that. So at that time, when as a parent, and knowing that my little six-year-old that I could hold and hug while 15 other babies' families couldn't do, I kept saying I have to do something more. And this is another example today that we have to do more to make sure that our schools are safe. This is another example, and I'm so, so thankful and thank God that we have not had any situations like this in our city. But we have to do more because we have another 18-year-old that decided to do a mass shooting, an 18-year-old. And hate is not something that, um, no, you, you're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a taught um, behavior. You're not born with it. And these young people are not um, being taught. We have to raise our children to love and become passion. And I just don't understand the hate that we have in this world, especially with these young people nowadays. This is a second 18-year-old that has done something like this. So I say this, we have to be more intentional. We can't just, when it happens, then we're more proactive. We have to be more intentional. And I'm going to do more to make sure that we can secure more of our elementary schools. And hopefully across this country that they resonate that these children are easy access. 
and we have got to do more, and we can do more. So my hearts, my heart, and my prayers go out to these families tonight and for the rest of their lives because they will never, ever get that back. Their children are gone. So that's all I want to say, and we need to keep these families in our prayers, and this is something we need to continue to have a conversation about and not let this be next week, the week after we don't think about this anymore. We have to keep this on the forefront. You guys have a good night. Thank you, Mrs. Poopo Walker. I just want to share also my heart goes out to the families and students and staff and um, Uvalde, Texas, and, and thinking tonight about the school board members of that district. Um, can't imagine being in those shoes tonight after the you know, past several years that we've had. Um, I'm hoping that they can lean on one another. You know, the, I think people are clear on, I've spoken publicly about my feelings about gun control. I think more guns don't make us safer. Um, and I just believe deeply that we have to do something to address gun violence, um, especially among our youth. Thank you, Mrs. Poopo Walker. Dr. Gentry. Uh, thank you. Um, so I uh, just want to take a, a moment to acknowledge the additional graduations that have taken place this week. Uh, today, we had the uh, graduation for the Academy at Old Cockrell. We had a Bass graduation today. Whites Creek High School had their graduation on Sunday. And um, as you all know, our academies are supported by the Simon Youth Foundation. And we had a young lady who received a $15,000 scholarship from the Simon Youth Foundation at the Academy at Old Cockrell. Um, to continue her education. And so that was super exciting, totally unexpected by her and everybody, most of the people in the room. Um, but that has been a very uh, fruitful partnership for us. Uh, and in sidebar conversation, you know, of the things we talk about looking to find funds for, that would be an amazing thing to look to find funds for and partnerships for is to help our students, um, especially those who come through our academies, especially those who are finishing their education through some very um, complex and convoluted and complicated situations and in spite of a lot of circumstances, staying the course and, and, and keeping to their commitment to themselves um, to finish their high school uh, experience and to get that high school diploma to find ways to support them. We've got great partnerships with uh, Nashville State Community College, the partnerships we've just announced with Tennessee State University, Lipscomb University, Belmont, but these are students that don't always get the benefit of that, right? Um, because they're not viewed as those students who who are going to go beyond, right? It took them a long time, and it took them a lot of struggles and a lot of pushing to get them through high school, and we don't often view that they actually have goals and hopes and aspirations and dreams to do more and better. And so I would say that we find ways to and we want to talk about protecting our students. We want to talk about protecting their futures. We want to talk about establishing an opportunity for them to live fruitful and productive lives. It's helping them to get beyond their circumstances and further um, help them find opportunities to improve their lives. I do want to also give notice uh, here at this board meeting that at the next meeting uh, on the agenda will be the uh, extension of Dr. Battle's contract. Um, and so uh, we will uh, discuss that. I will uh, ensure that with the help of Hank, we get a draft of what that extension will look like to the board members prior to the meeting, uh, well in the seven days in advance of the next meeting, so you'll have time to digest and ask any questions. Uh, I'll say this now and just be prepared. I will say it again at that meeting, um, that not only has Dr. Battle been acknowledged as superintendent of the year at her first go around, um, sitting in that seat. We've talked ad nauseum and mentioned repeatedly about the conditions under which she took that seat uh, and the things that happened after she said yes. I think the tornado was waiting, the pandemic was waiting just for her to say yes uh, to stepping into this role in an interim space. We recognized very early in her time in that temporary seat her commitment, her compassion, her ability to connect and resonate with our teachers, our students, our parents, and our families to recognize from her vantage point of having been in those seats, the needs of the district and the way to bring this leadership team together, making sure there were the right people
people on the bus and that they were in the right seats on this bus for the benefit of our students, for our benefit of our schools, and the benefit of our families. She has proven repeatedly that she is committed to the best of what MNPS has to offer, and she is committed to ensuring that she's creating relationships and partnerships with individuals who are capable and organizations who are capable and willing to bring their best to this district. So it is on that premise that I will bring that to the board. Um, and again, we'll repeat as much of that as is necessary, but we'll work with Hank uh, as her, uh, as part of the staff to uh, get a draft of that extension to board members for review and comment and any questions that you have between now and then. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Gentry. Mr. Whitaker, I'm making eyes at you because I guess you and I will talk. Thank you so much, all right. Ebenezer. Um, <clears throat> I just want, I have one announcement, which is that I wanna congratulate all the people that have graduated, especially our own Angeli. And I had the pleasure of going to the NSA graduation on Monday, and it was very wonderful. And I just wanted to, to shout out everybody that, that graduated from NSA. They're very, very talented, and, and they show the best of, of our district. Thank you. And Mrs. Player, Mr. Little, I have not forgotten about you. We'll go uh, ladies first. Mrs. Player. Um, <clears throat> I just want to um, apologize to uh, Glencliff High School for not being at the graduation since I'm not in town, but thank you for Ms. Elrod for being able to fill in my shoes uh, before that, and I just want to send my sincere congratulations to the senior class as they're graduating from Glencliff High School. And then also my condolences to the shooting in Texas. Um, again, it's unfortunate education should be safe for all children, no matter where you are in the country and where you are in the world. So I just want to add those condolences. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Little. Yeah, I would say my condolences. I'm out of town right now in Central Texas. And so as it started to happen, you just seen a wildfire like jump off as you seen parents um, rushing to make sure this wasn't a trend that continued um, throughout the day. Um, and on a lighter note, just with graduations, I think it's it's the best time of the year besides field day to really see the expressions and the happiness of families um, watch their kids walk across the stage and, and take a leap of faith into this next journey. And so I'm um, thankful for McGavick. Um, Frida, I got a chance to lead the Glencliff, which my niece was graduating from. So thank you for that. But just watching that diverse school, I mean, man, you had, I want to say 19 nationalities, like walk across the stage and, and families like come together. And they did it in about 47 minutes. And so um, I really enjoyed myself um, and, and look forward to a, a fun and safe summer. You know, as COVID practices are relaxing, I just want to, I, I hope and pray that, you know, our students remain safe um, as we get a chance to return to school in August. Mr. Thanks. Little, thank you. I totally forgot that you took it, you took stood in for that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm glad you were there for your knees. So yay. Yeah, yeah it, it was all good. I, I really appreciate it. It was a happy moment. Thank you, Mr. Little and Ms. Player. And um, Dr. Gentry, I will say you forgot to mention that postpartum was also waiting for Dr. Battle. Yes, that too. I mean, yeah, literally, she you. had given her birth to her second child when she became our interim. And so, or I'm sorry, she became our interim, gave birth while we were in the middle of the search, unfortunately, and then we appointed her uh, chair, I mean, appointed her director. And so it's just, it has been wonderful to see the kinds of partnerships she's developed, like that with Tennessee State University that is making a $9 million, $9 million investment in our students through scholarships, four-year scholarships. Uh, and I don't want to be too coy, but also don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Fisk University has come scratching at our door to talk about a partnership and potential scholarship allotment. Cannot wait to see what happens, but that's what leadership looks like. And so I appreciate you bringing that, that contract conversation. I'll be in contact with Mr. Whitaker to discuss specifics, and we will bring something back to the board as soon as feasible um, to make sure that we are being appropriate. Um, I also would love to, I, oh, but yet I typically brag about the idea that I have nine high schools in my district, and I made it to graduation number five before my back gave out. 
for whatever reason, I thought that my five foot five frame could stand on heels for a number of hours, and my body said no. So shout out to Hume Fogg Academic Magnet High School, Pearl Cone High School, Lead High School, Cora Howe Exceptional School. Uh, I made an MLK, my alma mater, of what, the, the graduations that I made it to, NSA. I'm sorry, but I couldn't make it to you all last night, but I sent you all my prayers and thoughts, young people. Cannot wait to see at least one more graduation tomorrow. Congratulations, graduates, and your families. Uh, on a bit of a somber note, it does seem like we will just continue to pray for this country and for our young people, because as as we are grieving, as we were grieving a, another mass shooting last week that was obviously uh, race-based, we now have another set of prayers to extend to families and community members and a city around the, their community. And so we've got to be mindful of how we interact with each other, how we discuss each other, and what we do moving forward. So with that, I will say this meeting is adjourned. Go hug someone today. Has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.